Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Before watching the video, please subscribe to my channel. In this video, we will discuss What is Bitcoin and how it works? Bitcoin is a digital currency, a decentralized system that records transactions in a distributed ledger called a blockchain. Bitcoin miners run complex computer rigs to solve complicated puzzles in an effort to confirm groups of transactions called blocks. Upon success, these blocks are added to the blockchain record, and the miners are rewarded with a small number of bitcoins. Other participants in the bitcoin market can buy or sell tokens through cryptocurrency exchanges or peer-to-peer. -peer. The bitcoin ledger is protected against fraud via a trustless system, Bitcoin exchanges also work to defend themselves against potential theft, although high-profile thefts have occurred. Now, we are going to discuss that how Bitcoin actually works. The Blockchain Bitcoin is a network that runs on a protocol known as the blockchain. While it does not mention the word blockchain, a 2008 paper by a person or people calling themselves Satoshi Nakamoto first described the use of a chain of blocks to verify transactions and engender trust in a network. The blockchain has since evolved into a separate concept, and thousands of blockchains have been created using similar cryptographic techniques. This history can make the nomenclature confusing. Blockchain sometimes refers to the original Bitcoin blockchain. At other times, it refers to blockchain technology in general, or to any other specific blockchain, such as the one that powers Ethereum. Any given blockchain consists of a single chain of discrete blocks of information, arranged chronologically. In principle, this information could include emails, contracts, land titles, marriage certificates, or bond trades. In theory, any type of contract between two parties can be established on a blockchain as long as both parties agree on the contract. This takes away any need for a third party to be involved in any contract and opens up a world of possibilities including peer-to-peer -peer financial products, such as loans or decentralized savings and checking accounts, wherein banks or any intermediary are irrelevant. Post-trust. Despite being absolutely public, or rather because of that fact, Bitcoin is extremely resistant to tampering. A Bitcoin has no physical presence, so you can't protect it by locking it in a safe or burying it in the woods. In theory, all a thief would need to do to take it from you would be to add a line to the ledger that translates to you paid me everything you have. A related worry is double spending. If a bad actor could spend some Bitcoin, then spend it again, confidence in the currency's value would quickly evaporate. To achieve a double spend, the bad actor would need to make up 51% of the mining power of Bitcoin. The larger the Bitcoin network grows, the less realistic this becomes as the computing power required would be astronomical and extremely expensive. To further prevent either from happening, you need trust. In this case, the accustomed solution with traditional currency would be to transact through a central, neutral arbiter such as a bank. Bitcoin has made that unnecessary however. It is probably no coincidence that Nakamoto's original description was published in October 2008, when trust in banks was at a multi-generational low. Rather than having a reliable authority to keep the ledger and preside over the network, the Bitcoin network is decentralized. Everyone keeps an eye on everyone else. Mining. The process that maintains this trustless public ledger is known as mining. Undergirding the network of Bitcoin users who trade the cryptocurrency among themselves is a network of miners who record these transactions on the blockchain. Recording a string of transactions is trivial for a modern computer, but mining is difficult because Bitcoin's software makes the process artificially time-consuming. Without the added difficulty, people could spoof transactions to enrich themselves or bankrupt other people. They could log a fraudulent transaction in the blockchain and pile so many trivial transactions on top of it that untangling the fraud would become impossible. By the same token, it would be easy to insert fraudulent transactions into past blocks. The network would become a sprawling, spammy mess of competing ledgers, and Bitcoin would be worthless. Having, As previously mentioned, miners are rewarded with Bitcoin for verifying blocks of transactions. This reward is cut in half every 210,000 blocks mined, or about every four years. This event is called the halving or the halvening. The system is built in as a deflationary one for the rate at which new Bitcoin is released into circulation. 
This process is designed so that rewards for Bitcoin mining will continue until about 2140. When all Bitcoin is mined from the code and all having are finished, the miners will remain incentivized by fees that they will charge network users. The hope is that healthy competition will keep fees low. This system drives up Bitcoin stock to flow ratio and lowers its inflation until it is eventually zero. After the third halving that took place on May 11, 2020, the reward for each block mine became 6.25 bitcoins. Hashes. Here is a slightly more technical description of how mining works. The network of miners, who are scattered across the globe and not bound to each other by personal or professional ties, receives the latest batch of transaction data. They run the data through a cryptographic algorithm that generates a hash a string of numbers and letters that verifies the information's validity, but does not reveal the information itself. In reality, this ideal vision of decentralized mining is no longer accurate, with industrial-scale mining farms and powerful mining pools forming an oligopoly. A hash allows the Bitcoin network to instantly check the validity of a block. It would be incredibly time-consuming to comb through the entire ledger to make sure that the person mining the most recent batch of transactions hasn't tried anything funny. Instead, the previous block's hash appears within the new block. If the most minute detail had been altered in the previous block, that hash would change. Even if the alteration was 20,000 blocks back in the chain, that block's hash would set off a cascade of new hashes and tip off the network. Bitcoin Transactions For most individuals participating in the Bitcoin network, the ins and outs of the blockchain, hash rates, and mining are not particularly relevant. Outside of the mining community, Bitcoin owners usually purchase their cryptocurrency supply through a Bitcoin exchange. These are online platforms that facilitate transactions of Bitcoin and, often, other digital currencies. Bitcoin exchanges such as Coinbase bring together market participants from around the world to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. These exchanges have been both increasingly popular, as Bitcoin's popularity itself has grown in recent years, and fraught with regulatory, legal, and security challenges. With governments around the world viewing cryptocurrencies in various ways as currency, as an asset class, or any number of other classifications the regulations governing the buying and selling of bitcoins are complex and constantly shifting. Keys and Wallets For these reasons, it's understandable that bitcoin traders and owners will want to take any possible security measures to protect their holdings. To do so, they utilize keys and wallets. Bitcoin ownership essentially boils down to two numbers, a public key and a private key. A rough analogy is a username, public key, and a password, private key. A hash of the public key called an address is the one displayed on the blockchain. Using the hash provides an extra layer of security. To receive bitcoins, it's enough for the sender to know your address. The public key is derived from the private key, which you need to send bitcoins to another address. The system makes it easy to receive money, but requires verification of identity to send it. Should you invest in Bitcoin? Bitcoin is extremely volatile. If you are willing to take the risk, first make sure you understand what you are investing in and have a crypto investment strategy. Also make sure you aren't investing simply because you have a fear of missing out. If you do buy Bitcoin, make sure you aren't putting money you need on the line. That's all about today guys. If you like the video, then please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to press the bell icon. See you in the next video guys. Thanks for watching.